My name's Nicole Banowitz, and I'm a sculptor. I make large sewn inflatable sculptures and soft sculptures like these. I'm going to show you a little bit of my work, and then we're going to talk about how you can make your very own inflatables at home. This artwork is entitled Outbreak, and it's inspired by different microscopic bacteria and viruses. I was really interested in taking these tiny, powerful organisms and making them large and playful. This is a stomach bacteria, is one of the forms that inspired me. And this is the smallpox virus. This artwork is entitled Out of the Bloom, and it's inspired by microscopic algae called dinoflagellates. These are prehistoric sorts of algae, and they can have a really positive or negative effect on the environment. In much of my work, I explore the relationships that humans have with our natural world and how complex these are. So this is my artwork, The Incubation Effect. This was at the Denver Art Museum, and it is inspired by different kinds of larvae and their life cycle. So I'm looking at the different things that these creatures make, like cocoons, egg sacs, and these forms inspired my work. I also looked at butterfly eggs to make these incubation chambers, which is where the larvae are changing into what they're next going to become. So this is just one example of my work where I am inspired by the kinds of forms that animals create. I also create wearable sculptures. In the piece you see here, there's actually batteries and fans on a backpack which is inside of the inflatable that I'm wearing. The space that I'm performing in is a giant inflatable cube and the backdrop is also inflatable. The piece I'm wearing is inspired by insects, which use diametic behaviors to protect themselves. That means they use a behavior which tricks the predator, such as an insect that tries to look especially large to frighten a predator, or a moth which has eye spots. The idea is that the creature tricks the predator rather than is actually strong enough to attack them. So now I'm going to tell you a little bit about my process. The first step in my process is to do research. So I look for forms in nature that inspire me. Often I look at microscopic forms or different animal forms. Then I make a drawing of what I'm thinking about. So here you can see a drawing I made of my incubation chambers. Here's a drawing inspired by root systems and plant communications. And then, because I need to then turn these drawings into inflatable forms, which are three-dimensional, I often make small clay sculptures so I can get an idea of what my forms are going to look like. The next thing I have to do is make a paper pattern. So every piece of fabric you see in one of my inflatables has a corresponding paper pattern that I keep in my studio and I use these to make the forms. After I cut out the fabric, I then sew them all together on my sewing machine. Once I sew everything together, the really exciting part is to inflate it. So I attach it to a blower and then I let it fill up with air and as it fills up I can see if the forms are becoming what I want them to become. And so then if I need to change the pattern I start over again and if I'm happy with it then I'm finished. So now you've seen how I make inflatables out of fabric with a sewing machine, but how is it that you're going to make inflatables if you don't have a sewing machine and fabric at home? Well, we're going to use plastic bags like you would get at the grocery store, and we're going to recycle them by ironing them together to make your very own inflatables at home. Okay, so now we're going to go over materials. You're going to need plastic bags, a lot of plastic bags. You're also going to need some sort of paper or parchment paper. You're going to need this to iron your bags between, but also you're going to need paper to make patterns from. You also might want some tag board, that's optional. Packaging tape, also optional. You definitely will need some scissors, and you definitely will need some permanent markers and a pencil. You also will ha absolutely need to have an iron and some sort of fan. Okay, the most important material we need for this project are lots of plastic bags. You can collect these from the grocery store which means you'll be recycling them. Most people have a lot of these bags hanging out at home, so you could have someone from your family save them when they go grocery shopping. There are also always bins at the grocery store you can get that plastic from, but you wanna be careful because you don't know 
what kind of germs might be on it. So if you're collecting the plastic bag, make sure to wash your hands and then leave them aside for a few days to let any germs get off of them. So I've collected these plastic bags weeks ago, so they're all clean. And you can see I have all different kinds of plastic bags from different stores. Some of them are white and some of them are brown. Um, I really like the white bags because once I fuse them together, I can color on them with permanent markers to make designs or change the color. But sometimes you might want a brown bag. For example, if I was making, you know, a bear or some sort of animal that's brown, I might just want to start with a brown paper bag. Most bags you get from the grocery store will work for this project, but just to make sure, you're going to want to look at them and find a little recycling sign that's on the side of the bag. And inside of that little recycling sign, it should say a number two. If you have all number two bags, then you know they're going to fuse together all right. And that's how most of the thinner grocery bags you get from the store are. So here is a close up and you can see me zooming in on that number two that you need to find on the bags. And if you find that number two, you know that those bags will all fuse together. Okay, so now if you have all your materials, we're going to keep going. But if not, go ahead and pause this video while you gather all your materials together. Okay, so now that we've gathered all of our materials, we're going to make our pattern. We're going to make what I call a pillow pattern because we create two sides and then fill them with air, similar to a pillow, which is two rectangles that you stuff. So our pillow pattern is going to be the shape of whatever we want to make into our inflatable. But we want to make it nice and big so there's enough space for it to fill with air. So I would say you want to get a big piece of paper that's maybe 35 inches by 20 inches or so. And then you're going to draw nice big shapes on that paper. So let's do that together now. So before we make our patterns, I'm going to show you a couple of samples from other classes I've done. Here you see a nice big shape that'll inflate really well. They put some tag board on the bottom so that it can attach right over the fan. And then these pieces actually just tape onto the fans and inflate off of them. So you're going to want to make a nice big shape so that it can fill with air. The area that's going to attach to the fan, you want to make a wide opening, I would say at least 10 inches long, but if you have a bigger fan, you might want to make it even bigger, maybe up to 12 or 14 inches. You can also measure the size of your fan if you want to make it fit exactly. Then you're going to go ahead and draw a big shape. You probably want to work with a pencil. I was using a marker because it was hard to see the pencil in the video. But if you start with a pencil, then you can erase if you need to. And so you're going to draw nice big shapes. You can see as I'm drawing, I did not draw some nice big shapes. Some of my drawings were just lines. Now there's no way that I can make something that tiny inflate with air. So I want to go over it and make it bigger. So really any detail on your drawing, you just want to make as big as possible. So if you look at these ears that I made on top of my rabbit, those are also really small. They're going to be really hard to fill up with air. So I'm just going to go over and make another shape around them so it makes them much larger. Now I think all of my shapes should be big enough and I know the direction that the air is going to come to inflate my rabbit. Okay, so now it's time to just cut out your pattern. So you're going to get your scissors and cut around the pattern that you've drawn. Again, if there's any shapes that you think are too small or too detailed, you can go ahead and just cut them a little bit bigger than how you've drawn them. But you're just going to go ahead and cut the whole pattern out now. So now you're going to want to decide what kind of creature it is that you want to make inflatable. So you can go ahead and pause this now and draw your pattern for your creature you want to inflate and then go ahead and cut that pattern out.
Now, when you use these bags, you can fuse any part of them. But if you have a lot of bags and you don't want to have any of the writing, you can just cut off the area on one side that doesn't have the logo. But if you're fine with the logos in there, you can use that as well. Okay, so to prepare all the bags, you're going to flatten them out, and then you're going to need to get that bottom edge nice and straight, because what you're going to do is cut off that bottom edge with the scissors, and that's going to make it so you can open it up into like a bigger shape. You're also going to need to cut off the handles of the bag, because those will make it a strange shape. So now if you want to use the whole bag, you can just cut it in half. But if you don't want to use those parts with the labels on them, you can just cut off the area that has the printing and then just be left with the clean white bag. And then after you've cut the parts of the bag off that you want to use, you can just gather as many of those bags as you need. And it works the same way whether you have the white bag or you have the brown bag. You're just going to cut off the bottom, cut off the handles, and then I'm going to cut off the printing because I don't want to use it. But if not, then I just cut it in half and have the whole sheet ready. And then I'm just going to gather up all my scraps together and make sure to put them in a place where I can recycle them. Okay, so next we have to decide how many layers of bags we want to fuse together for our inflatable. This is four layers. It's good because it's kind of soft and it'll inflate really nicely, but you just have to be careful you don't get holes in it when you fuse it. This is six layers. It's kind of in between. And this is eight, which is nice and thick, but it's almost too thick to get a nice inflation. So you want to think about do you want four, six, or eight bags. I think for mine I'm going to do six layers. Okay, in order to iron, you're going to need a workspace where you have an iron and a smaller piece of paper and one really large piece of paper. You're going to need to iron your bags in between two pieces of paper or parchment paper. Then you're going to need a lot of those bags that we prepped earlier. Tons and tons of bags. But how many bags are you going to need? You're going to have to use your pattern to figure that out. Okay, so now I need to figure out how many bags I'm going to need to make a piece big enough for my pattern. So I'm going to lay my pattern out and then I'm going to take my cut bags and layer them up to see how many I need. So it looks like if I overlap two bags, I can fill the whole space of my rabbit pattern. I have to make sure they overlap because when they fuse, I want them to fuse to each other. So for each layer, I'm rotating the way that I add the bags so the seam ends up in a different place each time. I'm also smoothing out the bags as I add each bag because I want to make sure that when I iron them, they don't make any weird wrinkles. So now I have to do the math. If I need two bags per layer, and I want six layers, that means I'm going to need 12 bags. But because it's an inflatable and I'm making a pillow pattern, that means I need two sides, which means all together I'm going to need 24 pieces of plastic. So I need to make sure that I've cut up 24 plastic bags in order to have enough to make both sides of my inflatable. Okay, so now I have my six layers of bags on my big piece of paper. I'm going to take my iron and begin to iron it. My iron should be set on a setting of synthetics or rayon. You might want to test a little bit first to see how well it's fusing the bags. You want the bags to fuse together, but you don't want them to melt. If they shrink up and melt and there's holes in them, then you know you have the iron on way too high. You also don't want to leave the iron in one spot. You want to keep moving it around as you iron.
Also, if you have some fun, kind of funny edges where the bags are different shapes, you can fold those over so you get a nice edge. You also want to make sure that you keep moving around your whole piece so that you can iron every part of it. Once you've ironed everywhere on one side, go ahead and flip the whole thing over so that you can iron the back side. You're going to notice that on the back side, the top layer of bags haven't fused at all. So now you're going to need to do the same thing you did on the first side on the back side. You can see the areas where I'm ironing, they start to become more flat, less bubbly, and you can tell that they're stuck together, but not melted. Again, you're just fusing them together. You're not melting them. You don't want them to completely melt. You still want them to be a little bit soft so that they can still inflate with air. Another thing you may want to do is in the spot where you're inflating, you might want to have some ventilation. You might want to have a window open nearby or a fan. You could also wear a mask in case there's any plastic fumes. There shouldn't be any fumes because you're not actually melting the bags, but just in case it's always good to work near an open window. Remember that you're going to need two pieces to create your inflatable sculpture. So now you can go ahead, pause the video, and stack up all your layers of bags to reach either four, six, or eight layers, and then go ahead and iron your bags together to the correct size for your pattern. Okay, now that we have all our bags ironed, we're going to take our pattern and put it on our piece of bags that are ironed, and we're gonna go along the outside with a Sharpie marker. We're gonna leave a little bit of space because when we cut this off, we're gonna wanna cut that Sharpie marker line off. So just go around and outline your whole pattern on your cut bags, and you're gonna wanna do that to both of your bags. And then next, now that you have that outline, you're just gonna wanna cut out your shape. So you're gonna use the scissors, and you're gonna cut so that you're actually cutting off that Sharpie line so that then you just have the nice white of the bags. So there you can see I actually cut off that Sharpie line. So then you're just gonna go ahead and cut out your whole shape. Okay, so now it's time to fuse our two halves of our pillow inflatable together. So we're gonna need our two halves, we're gonna need our paper that's underneath, we're gonna need a little paper to go on top, an iron, and either someone to work with us or some sort of fabric weight. So you wanna layer them up nice on top of each other so that they line up, and then you can have your partner hold them down while you iron, or if you're alone, you can have something that you weigh them down so they don't scoot around as you're working. Then you're gonna take your small paper and use your iron to very carefully just fuse the edge of the two together. You're basically creating a little seam of fused plastic all along the edge of your sculpture. It's maybe a quarter of an inch thick. And you're just gently going along those edges. And if you need to, you can move the inflatable around as you work. You can also lift up sections of the inflatable if you need to get to a spot and you can keep it out of the way from wherever you're fusing. 
You just want to go around until you get all the edges fused. And this is going to take a minute. I'm using the magic of video to speed up my ironing. Once you fuse the edges, you're going to put your hands inside your inflatable and check for any holes. A lot of times when you're going around, you don't realize it and you haven't fused a little section enough. Often you can tell in all those little corners, that's where I'm missing it. So then you're going to have to go back to those areas where there's holes and refuse those sections. Okay, so now that your inflatables are fused together, if you want to get some permanent markers, you can go ahead and draw any details onto your inflatable that you want. You can color it in as much or as little as you'd like. I'm just going to add the details back in that I originally planned to put onto it. And I'm using the black Sharpie to make the details, and then I'm filling it in with some colors. You can go ahead and color it in however you would like. And once you've finished coloring your inflatable, then we are ready to attach our inflatables to the fan and inflate them. So if you want your creature to stay on the fan, one way you can do that is by actually taping it to the fan. My rabbit I need to go onto this little fan. put a couple little pieces of tape on him and then Okay, so now you want to think about what it is you want to make as an inflatable. If you're going to make something complicated and big, you're going to want to work in groups. And you want to think about how that might be made as an inflatable. I'm going to show you different ways you can make patterns, but think about what it is you want to make as an inflatable and try to make it as simple as possible to create as an inflatable. Now, I think I want to make a larva. This is a larva I already have, but I've never made it as a plastic inflatable and I think it would be really cool because there's certain kinds of worms that actually can eat plastic and digest it and they make plastic go away faster than any other way. So I think it's really cool to make a creepy worm out of plastic bags. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a few different pattern making techniques. We already know about pillow patterns. You can also add inserts to pillow patterns to make them three-dimensional. You can break apart geometric shapes into planes. You can break apart organic shapes into planes. And then you can also put all of these together to make more complex and interesting sculptures. Okay, so we already learned all about the pillow pattern in the first part of the video where we made the bunny. So you are all experts in the pillow pattern. So let's move on. So here's our bunny again. If we had wanted to add an insert, instead of making a pillow pattern, we would have a long strip of material that would go in between the two halves of the pillow pattern. So you would fuse that along the edge of your pillow pattern. By adding that extra insert, you're gonna give yourself more volume in your inflatable. So the next kind of patterns or geometric shapes. You can make cubes, cylinders, spheres, overrides, all kinds of different geometric shapes by creating nets of those shapes. You can create these yourself or there's also 
websites you can go to online that will actually give you these kinds of patterns. So one geometric pattern that I use all the time is a sphere. Spheres are really great and you can use them to make all different kinds of things. So a sphere is made up of six pieces like this. These are pieces you can go online and print out and then you have a basic sphere pattern. And then if you want to make them bigger, you can do that by hand. And I'll show you where you can go to get these patterns. And you can see this piece is a sphere. So I've got six of these pieces put together that look like this. And then this top piece that's the fin is a pillow pattern. So it's got just this one shape twice and it's stuffed and then it's attached to the six piece sphere. So organic patterns can be pretty much any kind of pattern of something that you would think up that isn't a normal geometric shape. The next kind of pattern is just what I call an organic pattern. So this pattern is a different kind of shape than um, a geometric pattern because it's something organic that may be not um, the same all the time and it might be more complicated. So this I drew a piece here that's sort of like a pillow pattern, but then I put in these other shapes to make it organic. So you start to see I'm using all of these different patterns together to make one shape. And that's how you can get more and more complex forms. So what do you think this piece is made up of? It looks like three different kinds of shapes to me. The ice cream cone is a geometric pattern, it's a cone. The actual ice cream is a half sphere, and then the drip of the ice cream is a pillow pattern. And can you see what kind of patterns this one is made up of? I see pillow patterns, I see geometric patterns. The more different kinds of patterns you mix together, the more interesting your sculpture can become. Okay, so this is the pattern for my worm. Let's see. So you can see this pattern is made up of six of these pieces because I'm using sphere patterns and putting multiple sphere patterns together to get this multiple bump that happens here. So I'm gonna need to make enough fused plastic to make six pieces like this. So I'm gonna fuse a really long sheet six times. So again I have to do the calculation to figure out how much plastic I need for my pattern. This one only needs to be one piece of plastic wide and then three plastics long. So I want to do four layers. So that's going to be 12 pieces of plastic but I'm doing six pieces. So that means I need 72 sheets of plastic. Okay, so I have a lot of ironing do to do, so I'm just going to show you a speedy view of it. This one, I just have to do long pieces. So basically, I'm going to layer up my four layers, and then when I get to the next set of bags, I'm going to overlap them so that they're always going to have some fusing together. And then I'm just going to keep doing that over and over again until I get enough plastic. So depending on what your pattern is, you could continue to expand your plastic out in any direction indefinitely. So you can make whatever size sheet of plastic you need for your pattern. And once again, once your plastic is fused, you're going to lay your pattern on there. And you can either trace it with the marker and then cut it out. Or if you feel confident enough, you can cut it directly out with the pattern sitting on top. I like to put weights on my pattern to hold it down while I'm cutting. You can also, if you're in a group, have one person hold the pattern down while the other person cuts. So for my pattern, once I've cut all six pieces, I'm going to fuse them in groups of two. I'm going to do that by layering two on top of each other and then getting a small piece of paper so that I can fuse just along the edges. I'm just going to focus on getting a nice fuse all along the edge. And um, I'm going to hold it in place with my fabric weights. 
but if you're working in a group, again, you can have someone hold it while the other person is ironing. Just be really careful not to burn each other. And then go along the whole edge of your piece. And then you're just going to have to fuse and fuse and fuse. Go, go ahead and fuse all the rest of your pieces together. As you go, make sure to check that it's fully fused and there's no holes so that you can fix any spots that have holes and go back over them. I'm just gonna fuse it all together until you're ready to try to inflate it. Okay, so now it's time to inflate our plastic inflatable creations. I hope you enjoyed making inflatables with me. Here you can see my pillow pattern inflatable bunny and my larger inflatable worm. And they're both inflating with their fans right now. And I hope that you have some inflatable creations as well.